New item alert, CaseyGolden.com has these adorable cat creature stickers. You can buy them individually or in a set. Also new at my merch shop, we have these holographic prints. Ooh, look at them. Look at them so colorful and holographic. Only at CaseyGolden.com. <laughs> All right, let's get into the video. Today we're going to try art supplies from everyone's favorite store where you can buy furniture and also eat meatballs in the same place. That's right, it's Ikea. First up, we have this giant stack of paper that is really intriguing to me because it claims to be able to handle both watercolor and any sort of paint without buckling or wrinkling, which I have my doubts. But hey, that's that's what we're here to um to test. So I guess we'll find out. Of course, I had to grab their set of watercolors. Now, unfortunately, this is their neon slash bright colors because I didn't have a normal set when I went there. But here they are, the Ikea watercolors. And yes, absolutely, we also have some Ikea crayons. Super excited to try these out because as you guys know, it's the year of the crayon. We've got a set of colored pencils, which I noticed are actually watercolor pencils. So I'm excited to see what we can do with these. I've also kind of been into pencils these days. We've got this pack of, I don't know, generic paints. They're just, they're paints, yeah? I don't know, I haven't used a generic paint in a long time, so we'll see how that goes. Next up is a 24 set of felt tip markers. Look how long this pack is, and look how pretty these colors are. Ooh, all the colors of the rainbow. And of course we do have a dookie green. Very excited about the poop green. And last but not least, uh, just, just some more brushes. I wanted to see what their brushes were all about, so here they are. So let's get started swatching everything on this paper that is apparently going to be wrinkle free when you add water to it. I, I am just so doubtful. Okay, let's start off things dry before we get into that disastrous wet mess with some crayons. All right, here we go. Let's just jump into it. It's a crayon. It's a wax crayon. So far, I have to be honest, these feel a lot better than Crayola crayons. There's actually no flakes coming off. Where are the flakes? They just seem to go down so smoothly and there's absolutely no residue and dust coming off of them, which is very, very nice. I love these blues and teals and the green. Oh gosh, this is making me excited to work with crayons again. I'm actually impressed with how these felt. Let's move on. All right, keeping it dry while we can, we have our felt tip pens. So with that, let's get to swatching. All right, starting off with a thick stroke and the thin stroke. I mean, it feels nice. I'm actually really interested in seeing how they blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch all of them once and then we're gonna see if we can make like a blended rainbow and see how that goes. Oh my God, that sap green. We love to see a poop green. And we're gonna make ourselves a little rainbow and see how well these colors can blend together. We're gonna, we're gonna see how that goes. Oh, I just realized the tops actually go on the back. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say waffles would be pleased, but maybe, um, maybe not. I'm also starting to notice that the paper is really starting to buckle where I've put a lot of ink down. So um, Ikea, you have some explaining to do. If you put down, well, hmm. Oh my gosh, this paper, this paper can't handle it. Oh boy. Okay, let's just admit that these colors don't really blend well. I mean, honestly, it wasn't a horrible job, but um, no, I would say they can't really. All right, that is that for the markers. Let's move on to something that is a little bit dry for now. We have our colored pencils. I'm scared, but let's, let's, Let's do it and see what happens. We'll also try to do a rainbow blend with these guys as well. I like the way they feel. I just don't like how, how much like dusting they leave behind. Let's just put a rainbow here. I mean, I can tell they're actually blending quite well together anyway. So that's nice, I guess. Oh yeah, I also forgot that it came with a pencil sharpener though. I'm sure it works just fine. It's a pencil sharpener. How do you mess up a pencil sharpener? It's turning into quite an interesting mm, slimy texture. 
Very nice, though I gotta say, not surprised, that paper is super buckling, oh my gosh. How could you, how could you lie about it? Whatever, you know what, let's move on. <laughs> So next up is something I'm definitely not used to using and it is what Ikea calls ready mixed paint. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why is that so funny? It's not funny. Oh. All right, let's go ahead and start watching these goopy paints. I gotta say, these are some very bright and colorful swatches we have here. This is probably the most colorful swatch page I've ever had. And finishing up with black. Oh, the black goes down really solid compared to the other ones. So pigmented, wow. Here is our orange. When I was mixing these together, it definitely looked like I was putting ketchup and mustard together. Next, I used red and blue to make this <laughs> uh, brown, deep violet brown. It's brown. It's wow. <laughs> and mixing our magenta and cyan, we have this. Ooh, no, that's a purple. Actually, this. This actually just looks really similar to the, the blue color. That is going to be it for our paints. Let's move on to our last but not least, watercolors. All right. Oh my God. Yep, they, um, hmm. They weren't joking. That's, whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's neon, all right. Ooh, I really like this highlighter blue. It looks more like a teal and I really like it. Now I am curious if these can blend really well, so I'm going to do a quick, like rainbow, of course, <laughs> blending between our neon colors just to see if they are able to blend. I gotta say, these really don't feel much like watercolors to me. They're very dry, so I don't know. They should be interesting to work with uh, in a bigger piece like an actual illustration, so I'm curious. So there is all of our IKEA art supplies in a massive swatching. I am super excited to use all of these in a mixed media piece. Just a huge variety of textures and ways to create art. So a lot to play around with, so let's get into it. All right, so as y'all know, I have been super obsessed with worms. <laughs> And we're gonna draw worms on a floating island with furniture, of course. This is art being created with Ikea art supplies. So furniture has to be involved some way. So on top of our island here, I want to have some furniture, just random furniture on a random floating island. You know, nothing weird, nothing strange to see here. I'm super digging this wonky, not making any sense sort of situation. Okay, let's give our worms a coffee table. They're having a little conversation, having their morning coffee, you know, hashtag only worm things. And because you guys know, I always love adding rainbows when I'm using super colorful art supplies and geez Louise, these, these art supplies are super colorful. We need a very interesting rainbow. Are you ready for this? This is going to be a rainbow. A rainbow of worms. Let's add a few worms coming out of our island here because I'm sure these worms don't live alone. Not too many, just a few popping out here and there. I think this is gonna be it. Let's get into it. Even though these art supplies are all things I'm quite familiar with, they're all things that I don't normally combine together. I don't normally use my crayons with watercolors or my colored pencils with, say, ready mix paint. Which actually, I think that's the biggest art supply I was really nervous about using because mystery paints aren't something that I'm used to using and I know how globby and transparent they can be. So I was really nervous about how to incorporate those paints into this piece. But overall, there were just so many different textures and mediums and ways to work with these art supplies. I was pretty nervous going into this piece, despite it being for children. 
I was nervous. So I started off with supplies I was probably the most uncomfortable with, which is watercolor pencils. I have really been into doodling with colored pencils lately on my live streams over on Twitch. I used to hate colored pencils, but lately I've been really enjoying them, just doodling with them and creating little illustrations. But when it comes to watercolor pencils, I just, they aren't for me. If I'm going to use watercolor, I just prefer to go through with watercolor. I feel like going through and coloring and then going through and watering it down is just an extra step that doesn't need to be done. And also I do struggle with making it flat. So I did attempt to create a dark blue to light blue to white gradient. Obviously it turned out quite spotty, but I kind of felt like I was doing what I could. From here, I was actually really not sure where to go next. The colors were very bright and colorful and that's fine, but as far as value goes and contrast, I was actually a little concerned. I wanted to put down brown for the dirt of the island, but I didn't want it to be too dark, but I didn't want it to be too light because I didn't want it to blend into the background. So at first I did put a light layer of the brown watercolor pencil down, but later I decided that it just, it wasn't dark enough, so I do go over that later. As far as the rainbow worms go, I was very excited about these guys. I think this is the perfect way to incorporate the neon watercolor colors into this illustration because working with neon colors just, it doesn't thrill me, but I think using it as a rainbow was the perfect way to put them somewhere where they fit and didn't stand out or just seem really awkward, like I was trying to force them into this piece. So the colors are a little bright, a little crazy, a little bit neon. On. The yellow and green are quite toxic, but other than that, I do love our rainbow worms. They're really fun. And then I just kind of went into auto mode with the rest of this piece. I started to find which art supplies I really felt the most comfortable with and which ones were going to create the effects I really wanted. I was actually really excited to use the felt tip pens. They just, they were great. I love the variety of colors. They just went down so flat and so smooth. You could get a thick tip, you could get the thin tip. I'm actually really tempted to play around with these and doodle some time on my own just to play around with them because pens or markers aren't something I use often. I've been very experimental lately. So as much as I did just want to levitate to the markers and the crayons, I did try to use a little bit of every art supply here and there just to get a variety and mix everything together. And I did have to really think about how I layered them because especially with the colored pencils, once you put them down, other things could scrape them off or rather I was really worried about the pen not being able to write on top of things like the wax crayons and the pencils, which they don't normally do. But I was pleasantly surprised later to find out that the pens went down perfectly fine. So after I put a second layer of the light brown marker on top of the watercolor pencil, I was really starting to feel better about this piece. It's so bright and colorful and vivid and it was looking a little bit flat and I was a little worried for it. But once I added this purple shading using the crayon, I was so impressed with how much life it gave this piece and I really started to like it. I think it's just colorful and bright in all the right ways. I know, Casey liking bright and colorful illustrations. Who am I and what have I done with earthy colored Casey? I don't know where she is, but she's been missing for a long time. If you see her, please send me any information you have about her. I kind of miss her, but I kind of don't. It did need a little bit of outlining just to help it separate some parts here and there. So I did go through with the felt tip pen and use that to separate everything and line art it. Oh, and I guess the one little detail that I added with the paints is that I created little flowers on top and that was that. This was a really scary piece to work on, even though I was just playing around with children's art supplies. Like I said, it was a lot of different mediums to combine together that I'm not used to using. Overall, the IKEA art supplies are pretty basic for your children's art supplies, but I did have a lot of fun with them and I was quite impressed with some of them, not all of them. And that's, that's gonna be that for IKEA. forget to head to CaseyGolden.com for all of your Casey Golden merch. And before I go, I want to give a huge thank you to the patrons for all of their support. You guys are the best. If you want early access to the videos, secret sketches, exclusive live streams, and more, check out the Patreon in the description below. Thank you guys all so, so much for your support. Stay golden. Bye.